Hello and welcome to week six of CIT 15. Um, it is uh, right now why I'm making these videos. Currently there's the entire COVID quarantine thing going on. So if you hear some noises in the background, that's because the whole family is working from home. <laughs> and, uh, and it's also, there's a fire up in the hills. And so we have some white noise in the background of air filters running. So if you hear that, kind of fan sound, that's what's happening there. All right, week six, we're gonna do two things in this video. And one, we're gonna look at what you need to do this week. Uh, that's the first thing we're gonna do. And then two, we're gonna go over some content. Uh, and that will be kind of like the lecture. So let me show you my screen. And in Canvas, here in Canvas, week six, you can see week six, you're gonna go into assignments. And in the assignments, you're going to do everything just normal, right? It's what we've been doing always, all week one, week two, three, week three, week four, week five, week six. All that should be done. Uh, and so this research paper is a really good one to know about because it teaches you. I don't care what you write in the paper. You could write just, you know, Lorem Ipsum. So you could search for Lorem Ipsum. And it's just like, you know, junk text. That's fine, right? This junk text. You could use this junk text. Content doesn't matter. All I care about is making it look nice. <laughs> so that's what you're gonna learn how to do is to make a research paper look nice in that exercise right here. And you're gonna learn in the next one, fonts, how to install fonts. So that's totally cool. Um, some people have emailed me or sent questions in through Canvas, like why is my grade so low? You're starting out at zero. And then every time you do something, you're adding a little bit to that zero. It's kind of like work. <laughs> it's kind of like life. Your bank account starts at zero. And then the more you work, the more you add to your bank account. And over time, your bank account grows. So too it is with your grade. Over time, as you do work in the class, you're adding more to your grade. So you start at zero. You do one assignment. You might be at 2%, 1%. You do another assignment. You're at 4%. Eventually, if you've done all of the assignments and you've gotten perfect scores on them, you'll be at 100%, so it just adds up over time. So make sure you do these assignments through week six and then go into the discussion and the discussion for week six, uh, wherever it might be, digital warfare, right? So take a look at that digital war warfare one. You might YouTube, uh, go to YouTube and um, you've heard of this YouTube thing and then type in Ted Digital War. Right? and just see what they say about that. And uh, you can watch a video here or something like that so you have something to comment on. Say, ooh, I found this really interesting video about digital warfare or, or whatever. Uh, and then in my T-Lab, uh, week six, you should be through Windows 10. That's week one, right? And again, some people have expressed some confusion about this. This is optional. The training is optional. The exam is uh, what you earn points on. So you should have done Windows 10 exam week one, and then week two, three, four, and five, you should have done Word exams, one, two, three, four. And then week six, we're going into Excel. So do exam one in Excel. And then also down here under this other folder, confusingly named exams, I didn't set this up, otherwise it wouldn't be this confusing, you have quizzes under exams. <laughs> totally confusing, right? Bad ontological structure. And so do through chapter six quiz in here. You should have done the word hands-on test. There's a couple of glitches with that word hands-on test, uh, three in particular. And so if you do everything else perfectly, you'll end up with a grade of like 80%. At the end of the semester, I'll give everybody 20% or take them to 100 on that word hands-on test just to kind of round that out because of those glitches. And then if you want to work on this, you could go ahead and start working on that one. So that's what you need to do this week. That's the end of the first part of our little communication, this lecture, the first part of the video here, showing you what you need to do. That's what you need to do. So now you're clear on that. Second thing is we're going to jump into the lectures. Uh, my lectures, the way I like to talk about material and the way the textbook goes through it, don't always match. Last week they did match. This week they do not match. So we're going to briefly take a quick look at networks. That's my, my lecture. And then uh, we're going to take a look at chapter six. And chapter six is kind of taking us back into hardware a little bit. I don't like the way they present that. But uh, 
you know, we're going to do a lot of review of stuff we already saw. So it will reinforce what we've already learned. And repetition is the mother of mastery. Repetition is the mother of mastery. And so the more you do something, the better you get at it. Okay? It's just life. And uh, when I was, you know, uh, in my 30s, I joined a swim team. And I was the absolute slowest swimmer in the pool. Uh, they put me in the slow lane with, like, literally the old ladies. <laughs> it's like this. It's called master swimming. It's for people who are no longer at school. You can be on a swim team and you compete. And, uh, and I just kept going. I was there for the exercise. And over time, I moved from the, the slowest lane to the medium lane to the fastest lane. And I eventually became one of the fastest swimmers in the pool. And it wasn't because I was trying to improve or become better. I mean, naturally, I wanted to just do a better job. But it wasn't like I was really working. I just showed up every three days, three days, uh, three times a week, right? I showed up. And so the more I did something, the better I got at it. That's the point of that story. And repetition's the road to mastery. And so the more you do something, the better you get at it. So we're gonna have a little repetition and go over a little bit of that material. So let's jump into week six first here, networks. So uh, a network is anything that's connected together. And we could talk about social networks where humans are connected together. We could talk about computer networks, uh, you know, cell networks, cellular phone networks. You hear like Verizon or I don't know, the cell company sometimes talk about their network coverage. So a network is just networking, connecting things together. And if you Google the definition of network, just to be thorough and understand this concept network so it's not foreign and scary to us, uh, an arrangement of intersecting horizontal or vertical lines, a group of systems, a group or system of interconnected people or things. So a group or system of interconnected people or things. That's what a network is. And so we could talk about social networks, which is connections between people, or we could talk about cellular networks, which are connections between cell phones, or we could talk about, you know, networks for computers. And it's just how do we connect these things together, whatever the things are, or the people, right? It's just networks. That's what networks are. One of my favorite upcoming networks is this thing called Starlink. And Starlink is a project of uh, Elon Musk. And uh, he's, going to, um, he's going to be providing internet access to everybody in the world with satellites. Check it out, right? So super amazing. I can't wait. Um, so that's the introduction to networks. The reason we want to network devices together, and so we could just define networks as two or more devices connected together. The reason we want to connect devices together, there's two benefits. Okay, this is why we want networks. So the first benefit is it allows us to share information. And the second benefit is it allows us to share resources. So it's all about sharing. Networks is all about sharing. It's all about synergies, collaboration, working together, whether it's people or machines, right? It's all about sharing. And so share information and share resources. So networks allow us to share information, right? Like what? Email, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram posts. Look at how amazing and beautiful. Aren't I cute? Aren't I beautiful? Don't you want to date me? Aren't I so wonderful? Isn't my life amazing? Don't you think I'm great? Right? Like that's a lot of what gets communicated <laughs> on Instagram and Twitter and social media and Facebook, you know, right? Like, so we're sharing information, we're sharing pictures, we're sending messages, we're liking things, we're commenting, we're rating restaurants, uh, <clears throat> we're sending emails, we're sending emails with attachments, we're sharing information, okay? Network, share information. Second thing, share resources. <clears throat> Smoky, sorry. Smoke in the air. So share resources. We're sharing physical resources with networks. And so a physical resource would be like a printer. So if you have like, you know, in your house, right, several different computers, you don't need a printer for each of those computers. Everybody in the house can share one computer. And so that's sharing a physical resource. So we want networks for two benefits, share information, okay, and share physical resources. That's it. And it totally makes sense. So it's all about sharing. So this is like a picture of things connected together. It's a network. <laughs> and so when we get into like how do we create computer networks or, you know, even cell networks or networks between devices, what we first think about, one of the things to think about is the connection. How are we going to connect? How are we going to connect the devices? Okay. And uh, we could connect them with wires. 
So we could connect them with wires or we could connect them wirelessly, right? We could connect, they could, the connection could be wireless. And so if we connect with wires, some common wires used to connect devices together would be like, uh, co uh, sorry, would be like, um, this is a ethernet, ethernet cable, right? And it's, it's sometimes called cat five or cat six, it's ethernet. And the type of wire that it is is twisted pair because it's pairs of wires twisted together and there's a bunch of them inside one casing and that's called uh, ethernet or cat five or cat six. And uh, it's also less commonly referred to as twisted pair. But that's kind of like got that RJ45 jack. So the RJ12, I think it is, jack is like the old phone wall jacks. And uh, Ethernet, you know, it's just a cable, looks like a big phone jack, plugs into the back of your computer. It's got a plastic kind of thing on it. I don't have one here, but anyhow, that's, that's Ethernet. The next one's coaxial cable. This is like, you know, comes out of your wall. It's for like usually plugged into TVs. It often screws it into the back of your router modem, you know, that you get from, I don't know who you get that stuff from. Uh, for not, it's Comcast or Xfinity, that's it, right? So that's coaxial. It's another way we could send data between devices and our way devices can be connected with wires. And then finally, we have like a fiber optic cable. And so fiber optic cable is a cable that transmits light. And so these first two cables, Ethernet and coaxial, transmit pulses of electricity, uh, but fiber optic transmits pulses of light. And so light moves at the speed of light, which is super fast. And uh, you could Google speed of light, uh, and you could Google like how far is it to Australia. And like it takes a fraction of a second at the speed of light to go from California to Australia because the speed of light's really fast. And so uh, fiber optic is super fast. And there's a great YouTube video, which you can watch. And it's called, because um, you know, we learn things on YouTube. It's called um, uh, TED Talk, what is the internet? TED Talk, what is the internet? Andrew Blum, what is the internet really? Okay, so that kind of shows you how fiber optic cable gets installed around the world super interesting to watch. So go check out that video. Pause this video now and go watch it. It's totally worth it. All right, so that's the first thing. We could connect devices with wires, and then we could also connect them wirelessly. And so wireless is just radio frequency. It's on the, you know, radio frequency spectrum, radio frequency spectrum, right? And so here's like images for the radio frequency spectrum, and like here's like, you know, uh, different frequencies and so you're hearing this you're hearing my voice because those are sound waves moving through the air and then vibrating hairs in your ear and depending upon how the hairs vibrate your brain translates those vibrations into sound right like that's how you're getting information from my head i turn it into sound waves there's actually not sound in the world. There's waves of energy, okay? And then they vibrate your ear in a certain way, the hairs in your ear, and then your brain interprets that a sound. And likewise, there's no like light. There's just energy. This is my interpretation. I'll have to talk to a physicist, see if this is true. But it's just light is just waves of energy. And our, it hits our eyes, hits rods and cones in our eyes. They're called rods and cones. And those waves of energy, are, 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 our brain interprets that as colors, if, if we see colors, or as shades of gray, or as light, right? And so it's waves of energy. And, and you know, the difference between light, the visible spectrum, and so I'm just looking here, the visible spectrum. Uh, so here's visible, right, that little gray part. And there's all these waves of energy which aren't in the visible, and all these waves up here that aren't in the visible. Here's infrared. It's electromagnetic spectrum, right? And uh, and then over here, I'm just looking, ultra, ultraviolet, anyhow. Somewhere in there, all, all those, and the, the frequency there is like, you know, how fast are the waves moving? So this is why like uh, radiation is dangerous. Uh, higher frequency, shorter wavelength, they're really powerful little energy waves and they could mutate your DNA and cause cancer. It's radiation, right? And, um, 
and then longer, slower waves are out here, like radio waves. I don't know where sound waves fall. Is that farther? I don't know. I, sh I should have taken classes in physics. I never did. So I'm just looking here. Uh, maritime radio, increasing wavelength, and then uh, uh, increasing frequency. So, you know, I'm just looking to see if it has sound. But everything's these energy waves, okay? Everything's these energy waves. And that's how wireless, that's how wireless uh, connections work. It's just, you know, energy waves being transmitted from one device to another. <laughs> Put on your tin aluminum foil hat at this point. So there's a couple of different wireless connections. So, you know, there's like the normal Wi-Fi and the standard of that is 802.11. It's like the IEEE, -E -E, three E's, Internet Electronic Engineering something group, right? But it's, that's the standard, 802.11 and then some letter of the alphabet, A, B, G, N, whatever. Whatever's the most expensive is the newest. And, uh, and so that's Wi-Fi. And you can see here 2.4 gigahertz, that kind of speaks to the frequency. Um, and, uh, and then there's also Bluetooth. And so Bluetooth, Wi-Fi has a kind of, it's like for your house, right? And then Bluetooth is like your own personal network. Let, let me connect my phone to my headphones, right? Like that would be done with Bluetooth or my phone to my car, that would be Bluetooth. And um, so we got Wi-Fi, we have Bluetooth, there's infrared. So the remote control and the TV sometimes is infrared, at least in the past. Um, and I'm just thinking if there's any other ones. Bluetooth, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, I think that's enough for now. All right, so that's the connection. And then once we have a connection, we think about the bandwidth or the throughput. And so the bandwidth is how much data can travel between two devices in a certain amount of time. And if you're broadband, you could travel, you could send a lot of data between two devices in a certain amount of time. If you're narrow band, you can only send a little bit of data between two devices in a certain period of time. And so that's bandwidth, also known as throughput. And you can do a speed test for your computer. So like bandwidth speed test. And you can just run the speed test, right? Like I run it and it starts telling me how much I'm downloading and it'll tell me how much I can upload. And so I could confirm that I'm getting what I pay for. That's my bandwidth. How much bandwidth do I have? And then uh, once we figure out how we're going to connect devices, whether it's wired or wirelessly, we think about the topology. And so if you think about a topographical map, it's a map that shows kind of the contours of the earth, like topographical maps, some of them are even printed in plastic and you could feel them. So that also the vertical dimension of the terrain. And so topology refers to kind of the layout, the physical layout of stuff. Um, and that's true with the topographical map, and it's also true with topology when it comes to how we connect the devices, how they're, how they're coordinated in connection with each other. So the most common topology, there's like, you know, there's, this is not the most common, there's bus, they're all connected in a line, there's ring, they're all connected like that, and then there's star topology. And this is the most common topology. And it's like, you know, everything kind of connecting to one central point. So if this computer wants to send a message to that computer, it goes through the central point, which is different than, you know, here, right? They all go on this line, or here, uh, they, all, they might have to go through past other computers. And so this is the preferred way because, uh, you know, it limits who sees data, and it also prevents failure of other ones. So, so if this dude unplugged his computer, then our network's broken. But here, if this guy unplugs his computer, the network's fine, right? So that's star topology. And then architecture is, is um, you know, this conceptual thing about is it going to be peer-to-peer or is it going to be client-server? And so the most common architecture is client-server. And in a client-server architecture, it's kind of like when you're at a restaurant, right? Like the clients come in, they sit at the tables, and then the servers come up and they say, what can I get you? And the clients say, you know, I'd like a Coke and I'd like a hamburger and I'd like fries. And then the server goes and gets it and then brings it back and gives it to the client. And it's the same way with computers, right? So in a client-server architecture, there's one computer and a bunch of clients are connected to it. And then the clients say, you know, I'd really like to see this web page. And that request goes to the server. The server goes and gets that web page, brings it back and gives it to the client. 
and then our clients say, will you please print this document for me? So that goes to the server. The server goes and gives it to the printer. The printer says, I'm done printing it. And then the server says back to the client, your document's sitting on the printer. It's been printed. And so it's like a client-server architecture. And, uh, and then there's a peer-to-peer -peer architecture, right, which is another way that kind of the roles and responsibilities of what device does what on the network. Uh, the peer-to-peer -peer architecture is um, uh, a machine can be a client or a server. And so peer-to-peer -peer is like an example of that would be like, you know, uh, Pirate Bay or torrent streaming or whatever they call it, where sometimes you're asking for stuff. Hey, do you have that music? Do you have that song? Could I download that MP3? And sometimes you're providing it. Sometimes people are, sometimes you're asking other computers for stuff and other computers are giving you stuff. And so you're the client, you're asking for stuff. And uh, other times, other machines will be asking your machine for stuff, and you'll be providing that to them. You're the, you'll be serving it to them. You'll be the server. So peer-to-peer, -peer, you're either the client or the server. That role changes back and forth. But in client-server architecture, you're always just the client or you're always just the server. And the only difference between, you know, like normal computers and servers, so a client and a server, is a server is going to run special software. It's still just a computer. But it's just got software that's running, so it could run the program of serving the needs of clients. So I used to think servers were special computers in some way. They're just another computer <laughs> running special uh, software. And then also when we are dealing with networks, so we've looked at like how our device is connected, the connection wired or wireless. We've looked at topology, right? How are they laid out? Star is the most common. We've looked at architecture, client-server architecture. Right? And we've looked at the benefits of networks. I'm just kind of scrolling through this list. And, uh, and so the next thing we, we think about are protocols. And protocols are rules of communication. And protocol is how you do something. So we have protocols, right? We have protocols in our culture for various things. So there's a protocol for eating in your family. And there's certain rules around eating. Like in our family, uh, when we're all having dinner, we have dinner, and you wait till everybody's done eating before you get up, and you wait till everybody's sat down before you start, before you start. Like, you know, you don't just sit down and start eating before everybody's there, you wait. That's the protocol, that's the rule, right? That's how we do things. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, likewise with computers, there's protocols for communication. And so who gets to talk? When do they get to talk? What happens if two people start talking, two machines start talking at the same time? Who gets to continue talking? Who has to stop? How do we check to make sure everything that was, was, was intended to be sent was everything that was received? How do we check that? Like these are the protocols. And when you look at like web pages, you know, so if I just go to, I guess maybe I'll go back to Starlink. Like if I was to copy that and then paste it again, you're going to see HTTPS, and that stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, right? So there's a protocol for transferring stuff over the Internet, and TCP IP is one of those protocols. Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol, that's for the Internet. HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, that's for the Internet, okay? So those are protocols, rules of communications. And then we have modems and routers. So originally the word modem came from modulate, demodulate. Because modulate, you modulate sound. And we needed to transfer data over phone wires. And so it took the zeros and ones in a computer, a modem did. And it would modulate that sound, modulate those zeros and ones, right? On-off switches, representations of on-off switches. It would modulate those sounds, modulate, modulate that data, those zeros and ones, into sound. So it might say a zero is uh. And a, and a one is uh, right? So an off is uh, an off or a zero is uh. And, uh, and a, an on or a one is uh. And so, um, you know, it would look at those zeros and ones and then turn it into sounds and send it over the phone lines. And old modems used to, this is what they did. They would modulate the zeros and ones into sounds. And then the, the sound would come to the receiving computer and it demodulate it from those sounds back into zeros and ones. And so we get modem from modulate, demodulate. And so that's what a modem does. And you know they might not work in sounds today, but that's its role, is to take it from zeros and ones, the representation of on-off states, circuit switches and on-off states in the computer, take it from that, send it over some transfer medium, and then transfer it back into zeros and ones, representations of on-off states in the receiving computer. That's what a modem does. A router 
is going to route communications between locations. And uh, so the internet was created, and we'll talk more about this later, early internet map. So the internet was created, right? Uh, so that if uh, we had a explosion, a nuclear bomb went off like here, I don't know, at UCLA and USC wanted to talk to DC. Well, now it can no longer route the message this way, but it could still route the message this way, all right? And so a router determines what route a message should take on the network. And uh, that's what a router does. And if one route becomes no longer serviceable, functional, it could choose another route. And so that's, that's what a router does. Those are modems routers. Today, when you go to like, you know, Xfinity or Comcast and they give you your router, they'll call it a router, but it's a modem and a router. And, uh, and the router will also allow different computers to connect to it. Um, and so that's uh, also something a router does. All right, so that's uh, modems and routers. You'll sometimes hear these phrases like LAN or WAN. LAN is a local area network. That's like one network, you know, like in your house or one network at one location. A WAN is a wide area network. So that would be like a network between all different locations, you know, like, oh, we could access every location's network, all the different LANs, right, in this one WAN. A WAN's kind of a collection of a bunch of different LANs. Uh, that's what a WAN is. And a personal area network's like Bluetooth to your headphones or Bluetooth to your car. All right, so that's a bit about networking. I'm just kind of like cruising through there to see if there's anything else that I, I want to say. I think it's good to know about securing your wireless router. You could find a YouTube video on this, but some of the things you could do to secure your wireless router is uh, you could change the SSID, which is the broadcasting name. You could change that name. You could ch make sure you change the admin password. You can enable encryption so all the devices connecting to it are encrypted. You could disable the SSID broadcast. You could also do MAC address authentication. So I have videos. Uh, you could search, you know, uh, that Todd McLeod and. A secure wireless router and probably come up with a video or there's other great videos on YouTube that show you how to do this but that's just kind of also good to know about it's like a practical takeaway so that's uh, networks in week six and I'm gonna break this up into two videos in the next video we'll do uh, chapter six from the textbook test 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 making sure I'm still going I can't find stop Oh, I see what I'm doing.